I'm in the Eternal City, and we are about to take a bite out of history, 28 centuries to be exact, with ancient ruins and one of the most dramatic skylines in Europe. I'm hitting the streets to check out the local food scene. Wee. From open air markets and corner shops My mortadella sandwich. to artichokes in the Jewish ghetto, mm. the food scene is as diverse as the culture. It's then on to one of my favorite trattorias for dinner, Al 34. Benvenuti a Roma. Welcome to Rome. About 10 times bigger than Paris, Rome is divided into 21 districts. To start the day, I made my way to Campo dei Fiore in the historic center to check out the city's most famous outdoor market. But my morning in Italy starts out like any other, with a cappuccino, and I had a front row seat to all the action. Campo dei Fiore means field of flowers, because that is what it literally was until about 1400 years ago. Now it's home to a myriad of vendors and cultures from around the world that draw locals and tourists alike. And while you can find everything from locally sourced foods to textiles, most people come for the show. Look this way, push and turn, turn and push, push and turn. Look this way, it's killing fish. You cannot stay well in room without juice. Well, good morning. Good morning, mister, how are you? Wandering into the market, I met Bullion, who is as engaging and colorful as his fruit stand. So this is my fruit shop, Fresh Fruits Campo di Fiori. This is a really good smoothie. It's bright, I can taste the banana, and what better way to stay healthy when you're walking around the eternal city than to start the day with some fruit. I was then drawn to the vibrant colors of a liqueur stand where I could not pass up the chance to sample limoncello. It's five o'clock somewhere, right? Look at the different colors in the limoncello bottle. We have the dark one, which is the Sorrento, and then the lighter one is the Calabria, hence the different taste. Sweet. From sweet to sour, it was on to balsamic vinegars, where I learned not all balsamics are the same. Wee! Mm. You understand difference? Gets me right on the tongue. It is much sweeter, and it's definitely that sweet raisin. It still has a bite. When you come to the Campo dei Fiori market, make sure you check out the surrounding area and streets, because they are lined with great cafes, local sandwich shops, and corner bakeries. And my next stop was to Il Forno, an incredible Roman bakery just outside the market. A local hotspot, no seating, no nonsense. Grab your sandwich and go. Yeah, perfecto. Oh my God, look at that. Oh yeah, a mortadella sandwich. Due. My mission was simple. Vore pizza? Get the pizza and try the official sandwich of Rome, the mortadella sandwich. Look what's in the counter. <laughs> Served inside a focaccia-like flatbread called Pizza Bianca, which is simply seasoned with olive oil and salt. Grazie. Now the pizza, for me, was a trip down memory lane. I grew up in a very Italian family. My father was born in 1930 and um, his father came from Italy, his mother, my grandmother, came from Germany, and I basically grew up extremely Italian, eating all of the Italian foods and delicacies, and this pizza takes me back to that old world cooking that I grew up with. And my Aunt Lena and my Aunt Jessie made the best homemade Italian pizza, and this pizza immediately took me right back to Aunt Lena and Aunt Jessie. And I say that because their pizza was so thin, just like this, with the nice crispy crust on the outside. And all that was on top was a schmear of sauce. Here's to you, Aunt Lena and Aunt Jessie. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So 
mortadella sandwich. I love mortadella. It is my absolute favorite Italian deli meat. And it is the classic sandwich of Rome. This is it, it's the real deal. Rome's sandwich is the mortadella sandwich, which is basically an enormous piece of bologna with cubes of fat, delicious, and pistachio. Mmm. Oh! There's no comparison to bologna, it's so good. One of the things I'm most excited to try in Rome is prosciutto. So I'm venturing away from the market to Rosciolli, a local salumeria, for what I hope will be some melt-in-your-mouth prosciutto. Finding the shop proved to be a bigger feat than I expected, but when prosciutto is on the line, I'm a patient man. I made it to Rosciolli, where I was greeted by at least seven different kinds of prosciutto, sitting on top of the counter like jewels in a crown. I chose three types of prosciutto to taste and compare. One from Spain, a Serrano ham, and two from Italy, one from the north in Tuscany, and one from the south in the region of Campania. Now if I die and go to heaven, I sure hope they have one of these up there. Grazie. And so we're better to enjoy this salty delight Time to try some prosciutto than outside on the steps of a cathedral. Prosciutto is a dry cured ham made from either the hind leg or thigh of a pig. To make the prosciutto, it is first cleaned, then salted, and left for two months. During this time, it is gently pressed to remove all of the blood, and after two months, it's washed several times to remove the salt and then hung in a damp, cool cellar until completely dry, at least six months and up to three years. It's smooth, it's salty, the fat is buttery and melts in your mouth. It's so good. For my next stop, I headed to Trastevere, to one of Rome's hottest culinary scenes. Nestled just beyond the Tiber River, Trastevere is marked by narrow cobblestone streets and ancient homes. It's also marked by a complicated past, as it was once home to the city's Jewish ghetto. Built in 1555, the ghetto was home to over 2,000 Jews, forced to live in the walled community with only two doorways, one to enter and one to exit both of which were opened at dawn and then locked every night at sunset. While the ghetto was demolished in 1870, one very famous local dish lives on to this day, carciofi alla giudia, or Jewish-style artichokes. A local favorite since the 16th century, these globe artichokes are deep fried, giving the artichoke a crispy golden crust on the outside and a deliciously tender heart on the inside. Excuse me? How do you eat these? Everything. Oh, oh. With your hand, or do you pull? I say hand, I pull everything, you like, you like it. Everything put it this side, yeah, everything all. Everything, the whole thing. Oh. Buon appetito. Mmm. Mmm. You can taste the olive oil. And the heart of the artichoke is piping hot, super tender, and absolutely juicy with the crispy fried outside. It's like nothing I've ever had.
Where else can you do this but in Roma? Buonasera, we are on Via Mario dei Fiori in the heart of Roma and you are in for a treat tonight because we are going to one of my favorite restaurants, Ristorante Al 34. I stumbled upon this amazing trattoria on my last trip to Rome, so you are going to be in for the best baked gnocchi, smothered in cheese, lasagna, and of course, homemade wine. Upon my arrival, I met with owner and chef Nicola Casalini, who shared some of the history behind Al 34, which has truly been a family affair. My family owns this place from 1968, almost. Uh, almost. My father opened this place in the, in years ago. The name Al 34 is actually the address of the trattoria on Via Mario dei Fiori 34. Coincidentally, the trattoria was opened by Nicola's father when he was just 34 years old. And even more coincidental, 34 was the year Nicola's father was born. So for the Casalini family, 34 has been seen as a lucky number. And I'll agree, the restaurant has been going strong since 1968, serving up some of Rome's most authentic Roman dishes. Nicola's mother, whose age I won't reveal, still works in the kitchen. She is always here in the evening, watching every dish is coming from the kitchen to salt it, to, oh, to salt I mean, to salt it, you know, to, to, much, to, uh, to much tomato, right. to oil it, to greasy, to whatever. If you don't mind the cars and pedestrians, the best spot in the house is on the street. Literally, on the street. The energy is electric. Guillermo, another member of the family, started me out with one of my favorite dishes, spaghetti alla vangole, or spaghetti with clams. Thank you, grazie. Look at how beautiful this is. These baby clams look so tender with the little, it looks like chili flakes, and the olive oil, and the fresh Italian parsley, and the spaghetti. It's that simple, and it's gonna be that good. <laughs> the spaghetti is perfectly cooked al dente. The clams are tender. The garlic just pops right in my mouth. This is a winner. Paired with a frascata, a local Roman wine from one of the oldest wine producers in Rome. This Fontana Candida is one of the oldest uh, factory. In wine Roma. factory in Roma. Yes. Food brings people together. And in Europe, it seems to happen all over. Yeah, why don't you guys all come here? Before I knew it, I ended up meeting the most charming family from England. So, how are you guys liking Rome? Good. Good. Yeah, what do you like about it? Um, the food. The food. <laughs> What's been your uh, favorite food so far? Uh, what's it called again, Mom? At the carbonara. Carbonara. Spaghetti carbonara with yeah. the egg and the bacon. That is yeah. really good. My favorite parts of Rome is probably old buildings. The old buildings? You like the architecture? Yeah, like old cars. And Noah, what about you? It's probably the weather. It's a bit like in Britain. You, have, you never know what you're going to get. One minute, it's the best weather you've ever seen in your life. The next, you forgot to bring a raincoat. Exactly. Exactly. With the kids returning to their table, Ken brought out my next wine for the evening. I was really amazed by Ken's little trick for opening the wine and I knew I could not leave dinner without learning it. Try this little trick at home for opening a bottle of wine and be prepared to impress your guests. Excellent. I have waited so long to taste this dish at L34, the Roman gnocchi. Boy, you're a natural at this, Ken. I told you, it's my first time to serve you. A semolina gnocchi covered with black truffle cheese and then fired up in the oven. It is absolutely the best gnocchi I have ever had. Oh, I'm so excited. All right. The edges are always the best part. And having met my new friends. Do you guys want to try some of this? You want to try some of the gnocchi? Well, come on over. And they were waiting for it. This is just something you cannot not share. That looks delicious. Have you ever had anything like that? 
I've had things like it, but not as good as it. Well, great. But what, what actually is it? So it's a gnocchi, which is an Italian rolled pasta, and this is made with semolina flour. So it's like a tube. It's, it's made like a big log. You can finish it, Felix. <laughs> yeah, thank you, kids. Thank you. Enjoy. Good. My final dish was a lasagna bolognese made with green noodles from spinach, which, as I understand it, is the authentic version of lasagna bolognese. It is unbelievably delicious. No dinner in Rome would be complete without trying the house tiramisu, which was incredible. And just when I thought we were done filming, oh! <laughs> my crew decided to surprise me with a little birthday cake. This is great. Happy, Happy birthday, After dinner, I joined what seemed like everyone else in the city for a stroll around the piazza. Friends, locals, travelers, all gathered together to catch a glimpse of Rome's mystery and beauty under the moonlight. And my first stop was Italy's most famous fountain, Fontana di Trevi. And right now, they're cleaning the fountain, which they do every single night. They take all the coins out of the fountain every single night. Now, the legend says when you make a wish, and you do it this way. You take your coin in your right hand, toss it over your left shoulder, and that means you will be coming back to Roma. I'm coming back. It has been a magical day in Rome, from indulging in the city's diverse food scene against some of the world's most stunning architecture, to meeting new friends in the most unexpected places. This has been an incredible experience. Rome is the eternal city, viewed as such in ancient times as being the pinnacle of societies, and should it fall, so too should the rest of the world. For me, the eternal city has a more personal meaning. I am eternally grateful to share in its history, as well as make some of my own. Buonasera, good night Rome.